Yes, thank you. So, uh, so this study came about because there is a knowledge gap in our understanding of how um, TP53 disrupted patients do with uh, with frontline ibrutinib. Um, there's very limited data in terms of long-term outcomes. Uh, most of the data is out there is, is in small numbers and or in subgroups from multiple clinical trials that don't really provide enough power for us to really understand how, how the group does uh, as a whole. And so to understand this better, we pooled four prospective clinical trials together, uh, taking out the small percentages from each study, uh, the TP53 or 17P deleted disrupted patients uh, and, and followed their outcomes prospectively with meeting follow-up now over four years. Yeah, so I mean, I think uh, this study is important because it, it provided some of these long-term outcomes. And so what we looked at here is that we pooled, we pooled the analysis from, from these four studies, the NIH study that basically we extrapolated a lot of our information from prior to some of these datas and, uh, data and reports that are coming out at ASH this year. Uh, so this NIH study looked at 34 subjects as a phase two, all treated frontline patients um, uh, with ibrutinib. And then we looked at uh, three published phase three studies that also um, had P53 disrupted subjects within their groups. Uh, and those studies were the Resonate 2, Illuminate, and ECOG 1912. And the main outcomes that we looked at for these, uh, these studies were progression-free survival, overall survival response, and safety. Uh, what we found basically um, was that in these four studies, there were 89 subjects that were found to be P53 disrupted. That's defined as a, either a deletion 17P or a P53 mutation or TP53 mutation. And so 89 subjects were included. Uh, and